In this video, we will look into trade dependence. Trade dependence is when a strategy's trades have different performance given the outcome of previous trades. A famous example of trade dependence being used is from the turtle trading strategy. It was a channel breakout trend following strategy. There's a whole story behind this strategy. Google turtle traders if you're unfamiliar. But one of the rules they used was to only take a trade if the previous trade signal was a losing signal. In this video, we'll investigate trade dependence and test this rule on the Donchian channel trading strategy I showed in my previous video. It takes a long position when the current close is the highest in the window. It holds this long position until the close is the lowest in the window, then takes a short position and holds it until the long signal happens again. This strategy always has a position in the market. The code for the strategy is quite simple. We find the rolling minimum and maximum of the close price using the specified lookback window and lag it by one candle. We create a signal concurrent with the price. When the close crosses above the lagged maximum or minimum, we flag it with a one for long or negative one for short. Then we roll forward the values. Here is the Donchian signal and price plotted together. Each trait of the strategy is clearly visible. Here's the strategy's performance on hourly Bitcoin data with a look back of 24. It's not that good, and this is without fees or slippage, which would destroy the strategy's performance as the average trade is quite small. I talk more about fees and the strategy's performance across the lookback parameter in the original video. Here we want to look at trade dependence, so let's go over some code to isolate the individual trades. This function will find the trades from a signal, the times and prices of the entries and exits. I have used this function in videos before, but I've never gone over the code. It should work on any signal as long as the input's values are 1, 0, or negative 1 for long, flat, and short, respectively. We create two lists for the long trades and short trades. We keep track of the prior signal value with this variable and the current trade with this variable. We loop through each price in the data. If the current value of the signal is 1 and the previous was not 1, then a long entry is assumed. We check if there was an open short trade and close it. When closing a trade, we record the index and price of the exit and add it to the short trades list. We open a long trade recording the index and price. The final two values of the open trade list, indexes 2 and 3, won't be filled until the trade is exited. This next block does the same thing, but if there was a short entry, closing a long trade if one was open and opening a short trade. These next two blocks check for the signal going to zero, for a trade exit. This isn't applicable for the Donchian channel system as it is always long or short, but this function can handle signals that are not always in the market. We set the last signal variable setting up for the next loop iteration. After this loop, the time and prices of the entries and exits are recorded in the long trades and short trades list. We convert these lists to pandas data frames, then we compute the percentage return from the entry and exit prices. We flip the signs of the short trade return so they are positive when the short trade won. I add an additional column type to the long trades and short trades, one for long and negative one for shorts. Then we create a third data frame, all trades, combining the long trades and short trades together. Then we return all three data frames. With this function, you can analyze the long trades, short trades, and combined trades of a signal. Let's now use this function. We load in hourly Bitcoin data from a CSV, Compute the Donchian breakout with a look back of 24. This block will plot the signal and price, which I showed earlier, and this will plot the cumulative log return. We call the get trades from signal function with the data and the signal. Then we plot the histogram of all the trade returns, long and short combined. And here it is the distribution of trades of the Donchian breakout. The Donchian breakout is a trend following strategy. The two things to note here is the peak of the distribution is slightly below zero meaning the typical trade is a small loser. The distribution has a fat tail on the right or a positive skew. The strategy makes the majority of the profit based on a few high return trades. Back to the code, we create a new column lag one. That is the return of the previous trade. Let's look at a scatter plot of the previous trade and the current trades return. The X axis is the return of the previous trade and the Y axis is the return of the next trade. Because the direction of the trade alternates from long to short, if the previous trade is a short, then the next trade will be a long, and vice versa. I'll add a zero line on the x-axis. Dots to the right of this line are when the previous trade was a winner, and dots to the left are when the previous trade was a loser. 
A majority of the big winners, or the trades on the fat tail, of the next trade happen when the previous was a loss. On average, we can see that the trades have a negative return when the previous trade won, and have a positive return when the previous trade lost. While looking at a scatter plot is a good way to visualize relationships for trade dependence, there's a tool from statistics called the Runs Test. This is useful for finding relationships where the previous trade being a winner or loser is informative. To do the Runs Test, we transform the sequence of trade returns to a sign, negative for losing trades and positive for winning trades. We count the number of runs in the sequence. A run is a subsequence of equal signs. In this example series, we have six runs. The runs test equations give us the mean and variance of the number of runs we would expect to see from independent observations. In this example series, we have six positive and six negative observations. We plug in the numbers to the equation to get the mean value of expected runs, then plug in the mean values to the variance equation to get the expected variance. If we take the square root of the variance, we get the standard deviation. Then with the mean and standard deviation, we can compute the z-score of the observed runs. A positive z-score means we observed more runs than we would expect to see from an independent sequence. In the context of trade returns, a positive z-score is a tendency for losers to be followed by winners, and winners to be followed by losers. Let's look at the code for the runs test. We pass in an array of signs, consisting of negative ones and positive ones. We get the number of positive and negative signs. We compute the expected number of runs, then the expected variance and standard deviation of runs. After that, we count how many runs were actually present in the data. A new run happens anytime a streak of values is broken, so we increment anytime the current value is not equal to the previous. Finally, we compute the z-score and return it. Now we can use the runs test on the returns of the Donchian breakout trades. We load data from a CSV, compute the Donchian breakout signal and the trades, we convert the trade returns to signs using the numpy sign function, then pass the signs into the runs test. For a look back of 24, the z-score is 2.7, which tells us what we already knew from the scatter plot, but gives us some statistical significance. A z-score of 2.7 corresponds to a relatively low p-value. But now let's use the runs test on several lookbacks of the Donchian channel to see if this behavior is consistent across lookback periods. I chose lookbacks from 12 to 168. We loop through each lookback, get the trade signs, get the runs test z-score, and add the z-score to this list. Then we plot the z-scores for each lookback. We can see that the lower values of lookbacks have really high z-scores. A few lookback values did have small negative or close to zero values, but generally across the entire range of lookbacks, the z-score is positive and fairly high, showing a tendency for the Staunchian channel system to have shorter streaks of winners and losers or more runs. So with the knowledge of the runs test and what we saw on the scatter plot, Let's modify the Donchian channel signal so it only takes trades if the previous trade was a loser. This function will modify a long short signal to only take trades if the previous trade was a winner or loser. The input signal must be alternating between longs and shorts and always have a position in the market, just like the Donchian breakout signal. But this function could be used with a different long short signal if desired. This parameter specifies if we want the modified signal to take trades if the previous was a winner or a loser. We set last type to negative 1 or 1 as specified by the parameter. We get the closing price array and create a new signal. I call it mod for modified signal. We keep track of the last trade with these variables. We save the price of the last long and short entry here. And last long and last short will be 1 or negative 1 if the last long or short trade was a winner or loser. We loop through each price in the data. We check if the signal had a long entry and set the long entry price. If the short entry price was set and not NAN, that means there was an active short signal. We compare the short entry price to the current price, testing if it was a winning or losing short trade. Then set short entry price back to NAN. We do the same thing for short entries. We set the short entry price, and if there was an active long trade, we set the last long trade to 1 or negative 1 if it was a winning signal. We update the last signal for the next iteration. Now that the prior trade results are managed, we can do the output of the modified signal. If the input signal is long, and the last short trade had won or lost as we specified, then we output 1 with the modified signal. And if the input signal is short, and the last long trade was a winner or loser as specified, we output the modified signal to be short. 
After the loop, we return the modified signal. Let's now try this function out. We load data from a CSV, compute our Donchian breakout signal with a look back of 24. We use the function we just went over to generate two additional signals. One signal only takes trades if the previous trade was a winner, and one takes trades if the previous trade was a loser. We compute the trade returns for the original signal, the last losing trade signal, and the last winning trade signal. We print the PFs for each of these signals, and plot the cumulative log return for each of these signals. Here are the results. The blue line is the original Donchian breakout strategy. The orange line is the signal only taking trades if the prior was a loser. And the purple line is when the prior trade was a winner. We can see that historically, the Donchian channel breakout has not done well when the prior trade was a winning one. But this is just for the 24 hour look back. Let's look at the results of this rule across a wide range of parameters. Here's the profit factors across a wide range of parameters. I plotted it for the original signal, and the two modified after a winner and loser. I chose to plot the natural log of the profit factor. This is only because it makes the bar chart look better. For every look back, the prior trade losing rule improved the profit factor from the base strategy. And for almost every look back, the prior winner rule had unprofitable performance. By utilizing trade dependence, we improved the results of the Donchian breakout strategy. I think it is worth investigating your own strategies to see if trade dependence is present. In my experience, trade dependence is rather uncommon. I've only seen strong trade dependence on trend following strategies like the Donchian breakout. Keep in mind, I only trade crypto, so your experience may vary, but the turtle traders certainly were not trading crypto and they found the same rule effective. I should also note, other forms of trade dependence are possible. For example, instead of looking if the prior trade was a winner or loser, you could look if the prior trade was a very large winner or loser. I've heard of autocorrelation being used for trade returns for this purpose, but personally I've never found it effective. I'd encourage you to research this idea for yourself though. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.